In the article, published in the journal Sports Medicine, Amanda and colleagues conducted a systematic review with meta-analysis, investigating the effect of resistance training in women on dynamic strength and muscular hypertrophy. This presentation, brought to you by Talking Sports Science, will be a summary of their research. Regarding the inclusion criteria, studies were only included in the analysis if the resistance training programme lasted four weeks or more, performed by healthy females between the age of 18 and 50, with strength being measured by a one rep max and or changes in lean body mass or muscle size being measured pre and post training, with the changes being compared to a non-exercise control group. Studies were excluded if the resistance training was performed alongside nutritional interventions or other forms of exercise. In the end, 24 studies involving 912 participants met the criteria and were included in the analysis. 62% of the participants had an average age of between 18 and 30 years, and for 38% of the participants, between 30 and 50 years. Moving on to the results, it was found that untrained females completing a resistance training programme that lasted on average just under 15 weeks resulted in an average 25% increase in upper body strength, 27% increase in lower body strength, and a 3.3% increase in muscle size, equating to approximately 1.45 kilograms, following a total body resistance training programme. Further analysis of the data suggested no influence on training programme duration. However, it was revealed that for upper body strength, training three or more days per week induced larger effects compared to fewer training sessions, and three to four sets per exercise induced larger effects compared to fewer sets. Typically, younger participants tended to experience greater gains compared to older participants, and for lower body strength, training three or more days per week induced larger effects compared to fewer training sessions, and training volume also had an influence on lower body strength. For example, performing 250 reps or more per week induced larger effects on lower body strength compared to fewer reps. Also, supervised training sessions tended to result in slightly better gains. And for muscle size, no moderating variables, i.e. light versus heavy load, or low versus high volume, were found to significantly influence muscle size. Based on the results, for the upper body, it is recommended that females perform 3-4 to four sets per exercise on 2-4 to four training days per week for the best strength gains. Similarly, for the lower body, 2-4 to four training days per week is recommended with the aim of completing a high volume across the week for the best strength gains, for example, above 250 repetitions. Lower body strength can be achieved through a variety of prescription combinations. However, training frequency and total weekly volume must be emphasised. As always, there are several nuances to consider. As mentioned earlier, the training programmes analysed average just under 15 weeks. However, training ranged from 4 to 52 weeks, with only 6 out of the 24 studies using training programmes longer than 12 weeks. And from those 6 studies, only one used periodized training, while the other 5 programmes provided minimal progression recommendations, such as increasing the weight when a desired number of reps were achieved. Therefore, while programme duration was not found to influence the results, this should be interpreted with caution until more research investigating longer, periodised programmes on strength and hypertrophy outcomes are conducted. Similarly, although training to muscular failure did not influence strength or muscle size, this should also be interpreted with caution due to the low number of non-failure studies and the difficulty in determining whether true failure was actually achieved in those studies. To enhance training prescription, it is recommended that future resistance training studies provide specific details regarding the training programme undertaken. And that concludes this presentation. I recommend you go and check out the full article, especially the information within Table 1, which includes the characteristics of each study included within the review. The link to the full article is in the video description. Thanks for listening, folks. See you next time.